Welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Attack of Opportunity, the show that started off as a behind the scenes look at the Rollmongers Network, which grew into talking to content creators, which now I go after other podcasters. I go after other music directors. I go after anyone, well, just about anyone that give me the time of day. No, that's not true. There's got to be. So think about it. If this is like episode, geez, I don't know, 30, 40, um, there will be a certain science to like, what do you do? I'm a podcaster. Oh, me too. What is your podcast? Pathfinder. Oh, me too. I'm sure you don't want to hear the same answers. So I go after people that have caught my attention, a logo, a theme, an angle, um, fun chemistry. Um, they have their grandmother at the table. Yes, there actually is a podcast, D&D Grandma. Check them out. Vince and um, Victoria, wonderful people. But today... We are revisiting the South here in the United States of America. That sounds really funny coming from me considering I'm Canadian. Um, I have the distinct pleasure today to talk to Adam Kelly from the Southern Tomfoolery podcast. Adam, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So the very first question that we like to ask all of our victims here on Attack of Opportunity is, how did you first know that you were a geek, a nerd, a gamer, one of us, one of us? Oh, wow. Um, well, it was in high school. Um, I moved around a lot growing up, and so there was a lot of times that I had to entertain myself as I had to go through that process of meeting new people and finding new friend groups and all that. And uh, I liked to read a lot when I was young. And I was really into fantasy and science fiction literature. Like it just really, really grabbed me. And I liked kind of giving myself over to that kind of story. And so when I discovered that there was role playing games where you actually got to play and be part of the story, I was, I was really intrigued. Of course, that was in the days of 3.5 and as you know, an 11 year old, 12 year old kid, I had no idea how to process and do that, nor did I have anybody to show me. So that kind of fizzled out. But I've always been into, you know, whether it be video games or playing Magic the Gathering or reading just into the idea of grand fantasy and science fiction. So it was pretty early age, I'd say. So you mentioned Magic the Gathering. Would, was there a defining moment or like a gateway drug? I get a lot of people going Oblivion. They talk about certain video games like Zelda or whatever. Uh, but there's the Magic the Gathering card game. And for those that don't know what this is, this is a pretty spectacular in-depth but easily fun and addictive card game um, where you're sort of building an elemental attack army <laughs> and right. soaking up mana from land but uh it was there a gateway drug for you whether it's movies or games or a card game was something that yeah. drew you into it yeah so i played i might be dating myself here but i played a lot of the old school like text parser or point and click adventures from like sierra studios on computer you know, so I played like the King's Quest or the Quest for Glory, Space Quest. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with these lines of games, but they were like in the, in the late 80s and 90s, Sierra Studios was the king of adventure games. Like they were up, they were I, just, that, I, they were the top notch brand, right? I am and old I enough played, to remember, sadly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and so I played all of those and that was really, really my gateway into gaming in general and adventure gaming and all that kind of stuff because, I mean, I just loved those games. Now I've, I've gone back and tried to play them before and I was like, these games don't make any sense. It's literally mashing different inventory items together to try to solve puzzles is so much like one of the defining aspects of those old games. And so, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't even make any sense to be like a jack in the box and the key will get you a horse, you know, I don't know, it'd be something really ridiculous, but they always had like a little bit of humor laid, laid under them. And the story, the writing was always so much fun to get into. I mean, I really, really loved those games. And for a long time, I didn't realize it at the time, but a long, for a long time, I've been looking for something to fulfill that same kind of feeling. And I, and it wasn't until tabletop role-playing that I really 
got back to that feeling because i mean video games are fun but they're so much more like linear and and i don't know they don't have quite as much soul a lot of the times i mean there's obviously outliers but those early sierra games man those are special to me <laughs> well i don't mean to continue to date you as in like time stamp not <laughs> buy me dinner but uh how long have you been a gamer uh well if you start from there i mean from the 80s i mean mm -hmm. 88 i guess i was nine years old and got a first family computer and i haven't stopped since then you know mm -hmm. Uh, don't feel bad, dude. I was 16 in 88. <laughs> like, and somebody handed me a Dragonlance novel and we started playing Red Box and off we went. So nice. don't, feel, don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Um, but when you got into the RPG aspect, how long have you been playing those? Well, as I said, I gave it a shot in high school, uh, but it didn't really gel into anything. And we ended up playing Magic instead, like I said. But about three and a half years ago my current friend group that um i'd met by playing music and all that we realized that we all had mutual interest in nerdy things you know we like oh you've read all the dark tower books oh you've read all of game of thrones <laughs> oh, oh, no we, way yeah yeah and we're like oh shit like this is awesome and so like we got really really close just kind of through mutual interest and we actually watched um harman quest which i think gave us the final push to just try try D, &D. you know we're like oh that looks fun i think we could do that and so yeah we started up and we played the uh, sunless citadel module of 3.5 edition and then after that made conversion to fifth edition and I think we gobbled up something like four different modules. We played so much in the last three years. Do you remember yeah. the one? There's a great art op shot of a dwarf crossing a bridge. It was like third level for third edition, and it came right around the same time. And I'm I'm damned if I can remember the name of this. Yeah, I can, yeah, I, yeah, not gonna be able to help you out there. You go, it, it, no, it's fine. I just I've been trying to describe something out of the past to people and like yeah right after sunless citadel they ran this other one it was like third edition there's a black dragon in the bottom of this place they had a roper in there and this oh, is like wow. a 10th level account and the idea is like no run away you know trying to break the mentality of we have to clear every room and it's like mm -hmm. so many people die when they get to the roper and uh sorry a defining moment now talking about a band to get you into D and I have no idea what you're talking about. I I wasn't in an '80s Rush Genesis Yes cover band playing keyboards <laughs> back in the '80s when someone handed me a Dragonlance novel and the, the drummer couldn't come up from Toronto, so we'd play D and I have no idea what you're talking about. Where you turn to your <laughs> bandmates, going, you know, we're not feeling this. Um, we can't get our sound right. Do you want to play some D and D? And everybody goes, Oh, sure, I guess. You know, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Re really, really can't relate to you there, man. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm also a keyboard player for what it's worth. So, oh yeah, I I used yeah. to be. I'm not saying I can play crap anymore. I used to be long, long, long time ago. Yeah. But what made you decide, you know, to actually start making your own content where you guys went from playing and enjoying someone like Harmon's Quest to going, you know, we got to do this ourselves. We got to put something out there and show the world your own brand of humor and personal role playing experience, I guess you could say. Sure. Um, well, as I said, we, we like, really dug in to 5e and we were playing storm king's thunder and about halfway through that i just started recording our episodes just for us to listen to right just to have kind of a record and mm. you know i wanted to put some music behind it and make it all exciting and you know we were also kind of using that to try to get some of our other friends into playing be like hey listen to this i mean look how much fun we're having type of deal um and a lot of that comes from inspiration from the adventure zone you know like it's one of the first podcasts that i listened to you know real play podcast well i guess real play is a bit of a stretch but you know first first um <laughs> first actual play or whatever they call yeah it? yeah um and i really you know it's I, I mean the adventure zone has a very special place in my heart because it really inspired me to like all right i've been recording these episodes i've got a pretty good handle on the production side of it I've gotten a pretty good handle on the storytelling side of it. The players have gotten accustomed to playing their sessions in an episodic mind frame because we've been recording them and listening to them. So it kind of pushed them to play in a certain way, 
Um, mm. I was like, and then Starfinder came out and we were all hungry for a new system. We're like, well, let's, let's do it. Let's actually go for making our own content. And we're going to do it with Starfinder because it was new. There wasn't a lot of Starfinder podcasts out there as opposed to the huge amount of 5e ones that were out there, you know? Um, and as I said, we were just looking for a, a scenery change and it was, I th it felt like a good time to launch a show because we were really, really, really excited to play Starfinder. So I was hoping that some of that energy would kind of push through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, uh, I noticed a lot of fifth edition came out and everybody was like playing Curse of Strahd endlessly. There's mm -hmm. like a million of them. Um, did you get wrapped up into the Dead Suns? campaign out of the gate or are you uh no we actually specifically skipped dead sons because we were listening to you know the glass cannon folks do their androids and aliens and we were using that as a kind of a bit of way to learn a little bit and i don't know we dead sons as a concept didn't really appeal to me yeah the same way that aeon uh, I, did, i'm sorry you know? glass cannon who <laughs> right who are those guys yeah um androids of who not, not familiar could you tell me a little bit more about them no. um <clears throat> yeah so you know speaking of inspiration obviously they're they're a big part of it too but yeah at the dead sons it just felt a little too all over the map and i wanted something a little tighter um for the show and i wanted something that we could flex our our southern style on you know and mm -hmm. i guess they on throne is such a space western type deal that i was like this is this is the one we got to do you know oh yeah no I, I feel you like we're we're jonesing for something new I, I roped a brand new gm and we are actually lucky enough that through Corey thomas of dark galaxies gaming have put us in touch with fantasy grounds fantasy grounds is going to sponsor a new pod for us a live stream and podcast and we're going to attempt to do frequency of screams the horror one uh, mm -hmm. hopefully by the end of this month um so i'm gonna be calling upon you after the yeah. show like because <laughs> we don't know much about starfinder and we're gonna be like hey adam can you help us out here buddy you know? yeah well that's good because i mean we're planning on um dropping into signal screams ourselves after aeon throne so i'll be i'll be good to go you'll be knee deep in it you know oh there we go i, I hear collaboration behind the scenes and <laughs> right, right and beyond exactly. right? right um so was um you talked about Harmon's quest you've talked about the gcp and it's starting to ring a bell i'm i'm pretty sure i've heard of these guys just you gotta <laughs> give me a minute with those um no i i i i kid if this is the first time you're listening i am a huge huge gcp fan i love these guys they are great i listen to most of their material and it's sad that i'm getting so busy with my own stuff i have less and less time to enjoy you know those guys on the road um where does your crew actually create their content? Where are you guys located? Are you mics around the kitchen table? Do you do everything virtually online like we're forced to? Yes. Uh, so we are remote recording because there's two of us that are in Jackson, Mississippi. There are two of us that are in the Hattiesburg, Mississippi area. And then I live in New Orleans. Now, we all met and know each other because we all lived in Hattiesburg and went to college there together that's where we met but then we you know life happens and we all moved to different areas and stuff oh, like that, that is so cool you're like college buddies that got together found the interest in band and gaming and split apart now the miles thanks to the internet don't matter and you're that is very cool I like yeah that. it's it's awesome and um we've spent most of our time playing using remote you know virtual tabletop and stuff like that we got to play the only thing that we got to play in person was that some of the citadel and then i and then i moved first for my job or whatever um and then everybody started moving but we were able to find roll 20 and able to use that to our advantage to continue to play and it's been really awesome because it's kept us close and in touch with each other i mean we we get together a couple times a week to play you know and um yeah but we are all over the place but that was a big impetus and uh, us calling it southern tomfoolery we're not just from one place in the south we're kind of spread across so no that's very very cool now you know um this is a podcast as well as a vodcast going up and i think we've been a little neglected in na naming the name of the podcast is southern tomfoolery correct as a starfinder Paizo RPG, and you are running one of the adventure paths called the Aeon Throne. That is correct, yes. Can you, can you tell us a little bit of synopsis about the actual adventure? Like, what's what's the grab? 
oh it's it's you against space nazis man it's uh it's the classic rebellion against the empire story right um the kind of basic 101 is that you get you go to this new colony on this remote planet and find out that the Atlanti are there you know and they shouldn't be because in lore they're in a totally different star system and have not really come into the packed worlds um for various reasons so them being there is kind of a shock for the players and then it kind of evolves from there it's why are they there what are they doing you know what how are we going to stop them that kind of thing and it just it really has this kind of firefly space western vibe throughout the whole deal all right and you and it's really it's really fun it's I, I like it because your your enemy is is laid out and easily recognizable right from the get-go you know like you know what you're up against and you know you don't have to search for the plot line you know and there's yeah, lots yeah, of nice that. little twists and turns and stuff but it's not just like okay we're in book three and we still don't really know what we're doing kind of situation you know so i, I really i really enjoy Aeon Throne. It's great. Yeah, I was a big fan of Firefly when it came out. Star Wars for adults. Now, I love Star yeah. Wars, don't get me wrong, but like you said, that sort of um, the music, uh, the the frontier western and your frontier right. are the are the outside world planets. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really good way to, to package that. So the name of the podcast is Southern po- um, Tom Fillory. How long have you guys been up and running? How long have you been creating this content? Uh, we launched episodes one through three in April. Um, I can't remember the exact date, but it's in April. So we're still fairly new um, when it comes down to it. I mean, uh, we have, let's see, 33 episodes out at this point. Um, you know, but we've been playing together for three years. But as far as content release, yeah, we, we launched in April of this year. Oh, wow. We got more in common with you than I thought, man. Like, we're, we're three, almost four years old. Took a year to get going. We released in April. Was our Star Wars podcast? Nice. Oh yeah, we, we got to do lunch. Um, so, <laughs> how many different shows do you have? Do you just have the one? Are you are you looking into well, anything else? We have like a little companion show to this one called Tom Talks. Um, Tom is the name of our mascot, our little possum mascot, and you know it's basically our talk show that's similar to this in the sense that it's where we get to talk a little bit more about the theory of the game or you know it started our first tom talks episode was a recap of book one like when we finished book one of aeon throne the whole cast got on there and we just kind of talked about what we liked didn't like you know some of our favorite moments and stuff and then we're like well let's do this once a month and we've covered lots of different things you know we've we've covered the whole live versus remote play subject we talked about that a little bit um we covered our trip to dragon con we've we've talked about the different editions and what our thoughts are on all the different editions and how they compare and stuff so it's really kind of a chance for us to just talk gaming with various folks and eventually we're going to start bringing on guests outside the cast into it so yeah it's a it's a fun little show that we get to do once a month that is actually hosted by one of the players um heath he kind of runs that show for us Cool, cool. No, cameos are the best. We've we've been lucky to have um we use Star Wars as currency with some podcasts is going, Would you like to do a cameo on the Star Wars show? And they're like, Star mm. Wars, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we say, Yeah, we shoot Friday night, and they're like, Oh, ooh, Friday. No, that's when you know that's when the world happens. You know? Right, right, right. Uh, but we've we've lucky to have some special guests doing everything from Senator Organus Gana Space Butler to uh, a down and out nineteen seventies Vietnam hippie they found on Felucia that could give them explosives to hit the Imperials and we have a lot of fun with um like just having a loose and fast cast. Uh obviously this show is propped up with guests because we interview them. Um so when you say you have guests on, do you go after somebody that's knowledgeable about a topic or is just somebody that's willing to like another podcaster that you could um I guess it just depends on the subject that we are wanting to cover. Um as I said, right now we've been working through because it's it's Heath and I are always on Tom Talks. We're basically the co-host mm. of the show, and then right now we've been working through bringing in our the rest of the main cast through different episodes. You know, so we brought on one of them for a particular discussion, and we've got our um, John who plays Zeno, our android, 
coming on our next one where we are going to take a deep dive into androids you know just kind of talk about androids and popular culture and and what they mean in starfinder and all that and so um but he's our last like actual cast member that we have to get oh, through okay. so then so then we're going to start opening it up to you know if our fellow podcasters or people in the industry that have something that they could contribute to whatever the discussion topic is for cool for the episode so yeah it's it's kind of an open chair just depending on what subject heath wants to discuss that month you know oh i definitely got to check that out um i have a question for you for your upcoming android um the di- make sure you hit him up for the differences in the original iron gods ap android and what's going on now in the starfinder core book um because we looked into that we dropped an android we kind of went with a stargate feel with our mummy's mask and dropped an android out of the sun into mummy's mask and we're using the iron gods version not the starfinder version and um like i said you you, if you're going to take a deep dive that is a question that i would definitely would like to hear answered on that show okay. and de- definitely tune in and uh, you know bring the listeners with me uh so make sure you hit them up with that do a little cool. little research yeah we'll definitely do a little little look into a little, little look into that one as no it's, yeah. it's questions i'd like to know um so you got the two shows up and yeah, we, ne- have, we have uh another show that we're trying to launch if we hit our patreon goal which uh it won't be an ap it's going to be uh, we're taking one of the npcs that they have known and loved in our against the Aeon throne and we're going to take he's like this hippie kid that lived in the colony and we're gonna take him and his buddies on scooby-doo adventures um you know kind of home homebrewed one-offs uh but we've got that that's one of our patreon goals is to hit a certain target so we can start we can launch that show weldy's hacky slack heroes (laughs) No, and, that's uh, cool. You run the Pathfinder, Starfinder Society stuff because it's investigative and, you know, that right, kind of, right. that, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, but no, Homebrew, uh, always a delight because people listen to the APs because like, ah, oh, I can't play Rise of Rune Lords. So I listen to your podcast. Oh, I can't play this. You know, I never got a chance to. So I listen to your podcast. Um, but, you know, you got a real juicy audience when they're like, they follow a Homebrew game and they're like, mm. I like what you're doing that's different. You know, like right. using the rule set, but your you know your world is fascinating, kind of thing. We uh, we've only very recently stuck a toe in the homebrew world ourselves with um, a sort of live stream vodcast podcast called Simply Second Edition, and we're doing all these one shots back to back and trying to talk about the rules of Second Edition, the new core rule of Second Edition. Mm-hmm. And we pulled a, a fan. Jared Mercer is a fan that reached out to us years ago. Um, we sat him in the show to show him some stuff as like an intern. It was a joke. And now he has written his own world, the world of Rotrum, and we're giving him his one shot, you know, his 15 minutes of fame, as it were. And he's um, three, four episodes in. And my new cast, my brand new cast, are, are loving it. He's he's running around. We're running around a world that's like the show 100 meets Ember. You know, mm. sealed up Valley City, and then you explore the mythical apocalypse that happened, and all the cattle are huge, and we just fought a bunch of giant stone squirrels. Ooh. I know it sounds weird. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> but, awesome. But, yeah. yeah it, it's something. I'm running around. I went on Twitter and asked the world what to play, and everyone wanted me to play a gnome alchemist. So I'm like, right, made up a gnome alchemist. We're having fun with it. Um, we do but, have a lot in common. That is what I'm playing in 2E. Oh good! I, I am lo- I am so lost with that class, man. I gotta definitely gotta hit you. <laughs> <I'm> so <laughs> completely lost. I spent too much time mixing components to, for the blowgun to try and poison something. That oh, it's terrible. I'm so bad with this character. But um, the point being, sorry, big anecdote. But hey, welcome to the show. Attack of opportunity. Um, the homebrew aspect. Um, I gotta say and congratulate you is never underestimate the audience and the pleasure you can get with listeners providing original homebrew content. Right. So my hat's off to you, sir. Um, you mentioned Dragon Con. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't remember if it was the last Kamen Con, Paizo Con, or Dragon Con. Uh, I'm afraid cons are beyond myself and my cast at this time. But I know a bunch of podcasters that go to them. And... Um, was it you or one of the other that recently was uploading pics of you guys being there? Um, we definitely photos? did. That. Yeah, we definitely did. 
take a lot of pictures and, and put them up on our various social media sites. Yeah. And are like, do you have full exposure? Like people come up and say, Hey, I know you, or do you have a booth? So you can say, hey, where's Tom um, foolery. Are you just there to like enjoy Walt Disneyland yourself? And if they happen to know you great. Yeah, we, we certainly hadn't made so much of a name for ourselves that we were like recognized by anybody there. But what it did allow for us to do is to meet a bunch of people and we did, we spread the word. We really put, you know, put the feet to the pavement, so to speak, and met a lot of people. We handed out a bunch of koozies with our information on it to, to everybody standing in line and stuff like that. And we also went to GCP Live and met a bunch of people there. And we had a huge uptick in listeners after coming back from Dragon Con. Like, oh, wow. It was, it was really good so for us. But that the, really helped us get out there, you know. So the officials don't mind you spamming your card, as it were? Like without being an official booth operator or anything like that. I'm yeah, I mean, so it's it was, it's not like we were standing in front of artist booth, trying to like, yeah, you know, poach off of people that were going up to talk to somebody at the panels. Basically, you know, Dragon Con had this thirty minute line to get into the main building, and so uh, you would end up just striking up conversations with people in the line. You know? Oh, I see. Okay. And so I would talk to him about the show, give him the the koozie or whatever. But the way it is, I mean, it's it's a really like chill and like laid back vibe at Dragon Con. Like everybody's there to have a good time, and like I, you know, everybody there is there to support the hobby in any way that it's being represented. So I, I never had somebody be like, "Hey, man, you know what? I really don't I'm not interested in." hearing what you have to say about about your podcast or whatever but it's also kind of reading the people you're talking to you know um but we did play a couple society games while we were there so we were able to talk up the table that we were playing with some people at the table and, and share it with them and all cool. that so, cool yeah uh like i said i i have not get a chance to to go to a con uh i work i'm a unionized green grocer by trade these past odd years and we have a college nearby and when somebody walks in with like a geeky looking t-shirt i just drift over with a card i know it's really shameless but it's like hey if you're wearing that shirt check out these guys i don't even say it's mine i just like check these guys out hey brother right. have you heard the good word you know that kind of thing <laughs> uh and it's made my hometown one of our one of our biggest but um you have to like yeah. i apologize i come off as very spammy to a lot of people uh the gcp know me and I've, I believe I might have even ruined my relationship with them early in the gate because I was so excited about their content and so excited that I was making content that I was like, look at me, look at this. Oh, I'm doing this too. Look at me, look at this. I'm doing this too. I love you guys. Ah, pull my shirt off for Troy the Valley. Uh, and I think I really kind of put them off me <laughs> early yeah. on. Oh, what can you do? Um, so recently when um, Ellie... Uh, started following me on Twitter. I went crazy. You know, I was just like, ah, oh, somebody gets it. You know, anyway, um, there's a cannon fodder episode where they talk about Starfinder and they talk about ship combat and they talk about mounted combat. Mm -hmm. And they were reading listener mail and they talked about Joe O'Brien was talking about people going, uh, we have an all vigilante party, blah, blah, blah. And we were around this time, me and the guys were looking for a new show and we're like, okay, it's going to be war for the crown or ruins of Atlante or we're going to have our own go at Rise of Rune Lords. And we were undecided. And there was talk on their Patreon about Skidmire starting a show. And it's like, I am not going up against Skidmire head-to-head -head for a show. No way. I'm going to wait and see, you know, what he does. Now, he picked Ruins of Atlante. Great. Check that off the list. We won't touch that. Too much respect for those guys to go head-to-head -head with them. Uh, and that's not just a bad thing. I mean, if you're running the same content, everybody that does Rise of Rune Lords is an original show. Your show mm -hmm. isn't going to be the same. Like if I picked up Aeon Thrones tomorrow, I don't think you'd be mad at me. We'd be talking more about, oh, did you see this part? How did you, you know, that encounter? How did that yeah. happen? You know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, uh, we're good friends with Cosmic Crit, who uh, they're also doing Aeon Throne. And, yeah. and that's actually how we how we met and got to talking. And we met at Dragon Con with a couple of them from the cast. And it was so much fun to go, you know, to go back and forth and share stories. Oh, this is how we handled this or this is how we did this. You know, right, it's right, really right. cool. So, yeah. Um, so my approach of um, Troy LaValle mentioning he'd like to see an all Cavalier party. And I was like, 
Yeah, I'm like I'm like the stalker fan on the other side going, "You're talking to me, Troy. I will get it done." You know, and <laughs> and our biggest show is actually Dice Before Dishonor where we have three cavaliers and one fly samurai and they're doing War for the Crown. And we spent the first season and 20 odd episodes just doing Honor's Echo from Pathfinder Society just to see if it would work. Mhm. You know, uh, and we're going up against Crystal Frazier, who's like the lead director of the book with no direction in her pocket. These are big people. You know, we're going up against Paizo themselves are live streaming to Perception. So that is their choice of show. Um, but it doesn't matter. We love doing it. And sure, I'd love the GCP to kind of go figure guns at least once. You know, hey, man, cool. What you doing? That's neat. And I'd die happy after that. Um, you do what you love. I love doing this stuff. I'm a big GCP fan. And like I said, I didn't do it to try and ride their coattails. And I didn't do it because Lavalley, our savior, said so. He said he'd like to see it. Uh, we were searching for an idea. And he just said something that clicked in my head. And we're having fun. And um, we just go. And we do. We have Star Wars. We have War for the Crown, all this kind of thing. And you, sir, I want to see more content from you. Like I said, if you guys can get that Patreon goal, I'll be the first in line clicking and spreading the word about your next show and the next one and the next one because um, the more variety of content you have, change up some cast, change up the DM, you know, that type of thing. You know, the more the more you give out there, the more they want from you. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we'll, I'll drop a little, a little behind the scenes. We are definitely talking about adding at some point another full AP show of in doing a 2E AP adventure. But um, uh, we have, you know, that's it's kind of a long-term goal to do that. Um, but it's definitely something we're looking at. I mean, content is definitely something we want to continue to produce and put out there and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, there's lots of exciting things on the, on the horizon for sure. Uh, we really want to get those Weldy's adventures going because, for one, I get to play because uh, somebody else will GM, so I get mm -hmm. to actually play. Um, and it'll just be fun to do one-shot Scooby-Doo adventures that we can kind of get a little bit looser with, and like, and ha and it'd be as I, and we're envisioning it much more as like a Saturday morning cartoon type show than oh, like yeah. a big, big like deep like. Oh yeah, no, we we interviewed uh, Rev from the Crit Show, and he uses the Apocalypse game set. Mm -hmm. And his show, there's like the City of Mists and there's um, the Crit Show. City of Mists is an RPG, Kids on Bikes, and they are built for that kind of Saturday morning. You check out those RPGs, Kids on Bikes and the City of Mists and stuff for a very fast and loose, heavy narrative, not mm -hmm. bogging down in the rules so that the players have that sort of room to fill the blank, even if it is larger than life or cartoony, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for yourself or anyone that's you know looking for that, I highly recommend those. So... Uh, right now you're incognito, dry, run around, you know, Dragon Con and stuff. Hope to see you in a t-shirt and people can like go, hey, you know, nice Southern Tom Fultz Foolery t-shirt. You know, is there merchandise that we can get our hands on? Um, as of right now, uh, we don't have a merch store, but that is another one of our Patreon goals. We just launched our Patreon like two and a half weeks ago. Hmm. Uh, we've hit our first goal, which was to be self-sufficient. So we're really excited about that. Like we're not having to pay for hosting and everything like that. So that was really, really awesome. We do have um, these lovely uh, yeah, koozies, but we give those out to our Patreon oh, that, subscribers. That, that is awesome. That is. Yeah. Where do I sign? I want one of those. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a Patreon or Patreon reward um so any any tier will get you that um okay and then and we that's, have that's patreon.com forward slash southern tom flurry so i'm tom okay well we might as well say the name you know people are yeah. you know might as well say the name. Um, I know it's yeah shameless, and then we have like buttons that we make like like that right there of our cast and stuff and like at a higher oh, wow. tier you get a new button every three months so different button too so um but yeah we've actually got some t-shirts designs in the works and we're we really are wanting to launch a merch store we just need to make sure we have the capital and ability to do it so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was just telling uh last people on the show um the uh the lovelies from bad heroes about how we use teespring.com 
and they take their cut, they take their 11 bucks and then you can adjust your cut and then there's mm-hmm. shipping and no one wants to pay 60 bucks for a t-shirt, no matter how famous you are or not. Um, so we cut our profit down to like, like a dollar, five bucks, whatever, and then give it to charity because you're going to do a thing. Uh, and then people are only paying for the shirt itself through Teespring, the manufacturer and the shipping. We, you know, we hardly get anything, but then you're paying like 20, 30 bucks for a decent shirt going, oh, cool. I'll, I'll wear a Tom Foolery or Jeff shirt for, you know, and they, they show up at cons or whatever. We got a fan that's running around the cons wearing one of our Star Wars. We shot first shirts. Um, and there are ways online for someone like yourself that wants to get into this that are cheap, easy, if not free. You know, you just got to share with the distributor, as it were. Um, and sorry. And that's, you know, my if you didn't know my recommendation for that. Um, but where can we find you? Where we can we interact with you online? What's social media? I know you're on Twitter because that's how I found you. Yeah, so we're on Twitter uh, at Southern Tom Fool. Um, we're on Facebook. Uh, you just look up Southern Tom Foolery on Facebook. Mm-hmm. We have our website, which is you know SouthernTomFoolery.com. We are we have a very very active Discord. Um, like we that's our preferred place to talk with and meet our listeners and fans um it's a i don't know we just really love it and we talk about all sorts of things not just the show we talk about video games and books and movies and music and all and just everything that you could geek out about there's a there's a chance for you to get in the conversation there um if you go to our website you can find the invitation link to the discord channel and we'd love to have you i mean oh come, definitely join the conversation yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not talking to me. You're talking to the fans. I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> listeners. Come uh, yeah, sure. I'll totally uh, uh, show up and uh, hi. <laughs> um, anyone that wants to talk about your show, which I enjoy, I am down. And of course, anyone that wants to talk about the GCP, I am down. And if I just happen to mention I'm a content creator, well, that's your fault for inviting me. But <laughs> um, moving on. Um, one of the things I do enjoy about talking with the gaming community is asking people what they do for a living. Now, some people are very guarded about this, but like doctors, lawyers, ditch diggers, if you're a geek, you're a nerd, or if you roll dice, um, I just find it fascinating that people come from all walks of life. So if you don't mind terribly, what you know, what are you currently doing for a living? I am currently a full-time musician in New Orleans. So Really? I, and what's the name yes. of your band? Uh, well, I have four because you have to have a lot to to make any money no um, name it name it come on let's go uh, so <laughs> i want to know yeah. <laughs> my my band where i like write the music and i'm the band leader and everything is a three-piece like jazz funk fusion outfit called uh, neurotic diction it's very much influenced by like herbie hancock cannonball adderley I gotta, I, gotta write, I, gotta write, I gotta write this down i'm gonna start okay. finding this stuff <laughs> it's called what sorry neurotic Neurotic addiction. Okay. And do you have anything on Bandcamp or anything recorded? Uh, we, we have a YouTube channel that you can go check out. Um, it has a couple live performances. Oh, cool. Um, Very cool. And then, uh, and the funny thing about that band name is that there's no vocals. Um, you know, that's, I guess we're just, we also are very neurotic. So we think that we're funnier than we are. Uh, but that's, no, that, that's the gag is neurotic no, addiction is a, is a band that, has no vocals. No, that, that's um, cool. That's funny. Um, and then I play in another band called Cardboard Cowboy. And it's a very like Americana, Grateful Dead, um, the band kind of influenced group. Mm-hmm. Um, I also I'm, I'm play- loving these names. I re- <laughs> <laughs> You're going to awesome. love this one. Uh, the, the Big Worm is the other band <laughs> oh, yeah and it's uh it's a super group you know in quotations if you will of a bunch of people in new orleans that play in other bands um that we get together i don't know like once every two months and do kind of this super group type thing where it's a bunch of established musicians and we found out that we have like a real inherent connection like it started off as just a super jam one night like hey this band canceled on the bar a bar called somebody said that's band canceled can you put something together last minute and this guy called up a few of his musician friends me included and we got on stage and we're like there was no rehearsals involved or anything we just got up there and mm-hmm. kind of decided we were going to wing it 
And literally from the first note, we're like, oh, okay, so this is a band now. Like, because it just felt so good in the in step. And it's funny, Big Worm now has all this mystery behind it because you can't find anything on Big Worm on the internet. I mean, oh, okay. like, it's like, it's like one of those if you know you know kind of bands because we all have our we all have our other bands that we're really trying to like yeah push push. you you don't want to pull it apart no that that, that's really cool you know a lot of people don't uh i don't know if you've heard the story that this the huge huge song american woman was done improvisationally they just they were looking for a fill buddy put it on a riff they started playing and that's why the intro is so long and then buddy comes out and he just starts yeah. doing lyrics and the whole thing was put together on the spot it's one of the yeah. biggest biggest you know songs it can, ever it, it can really yield some of the coolest results um and it's been i mean it's been a lot of fun it's it's you know every gig that we've played has been at a gig that was way too big for a band as young and unestablished as us but it's because we all know all the context like mm. we all have our own clout so when we go to a place and say, Hey, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy are all going to get on stage together. They're like, yeah, let's do it. You know? So like, it's just been this really weird thing to where we've played five shows and every one of them have been like to a huge crowd that didn't know us at all as a band, but then loved it. Cause I mean, we, as I said, there's just a real nice, um, easy connection there that we found. So it's been a lot of fun. Right. And then I do a lot of, uh, sit in, work with with any band that you know hey i want keyboards this this night can you if i'm free yeah i'll go i'll go do it you know <laughs> that's awesome well i've been talking with kelly adam from big worm podcast i mean adam kelly from the southern Tom Fuller podcast <laughs> uh adam thank you so much man for taking the time yeah. to be on, be on the show um and we hope to see more from you and for you and with you because I'm telling you right now, I'll get my guys on board. A lot of them know your show, and we are definitely rooting for you. So check out Adam Kelly's Southern Tomfoolery. Where can we get the podcast? Is there a bit? Are you everywhere? Is it everywhere. just iTunes and Spotify, yep. Yep. Stitcher? Everywhere. Yep, all of those. SoundCloud? Yep. Well, Podcatcher. not SoundCloud. Not SoundCloud. <laughs> you got me. You found me. Uh-huh. But yeah, pretty much any podcatcher app will, you should be able to find it. So All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time being on the show. And we will see you guys next time. Thanks, Jeff. Of Opportunity. (laughs) 